nice, nice to have so many of you join us. And today really is um, what I'd like to do. I'll first introduce myself. I'm Jeremy. I'm the program director for the Masters in Entrepreneurship, and I, um, I'm a senior lecturer in the Operations um, and Technology Management Group, and I, I co-direct the Entrepreneurship Center here. And, and really today is, is an opportunity for, for me to kind of, obviously you have the website, but for me just to elaborate a little bit richer on, on our program. Um, and I think you know, where I'll march to in the end of this is, um, ah, you're unable to hear me. Is, are other people right? So yes. sometimes are people are is everyone unable to hear me? I think hopefully you're not. Okay, so in in some cases, please just try and check. So it's working in most cases. For those that can't, just try and you know a lot of times check that you have the right speaker on or it's unmuted that way. Um, we'll we'll call it the little startup startup glitches that happen, but hopefully we we get this thing um, humming along fairly well. Good. Um, so I was going to say, in terms of the program, we'll talk about the program, but while there's obviously lots of anxiety and, you know, the crisis going on now with, with the coronavirus, there's, there's an odd thing that's also happening for programs like ours, which, you know, most of all, most of the delivery happens online. Um, and in an odd way, a very you know, unintended benefit of this crisis is that you know, we're getting massive learning and massive benefit in terms of, of delivery, right? So I, I, there's been, um, in the last two weeks, you know, the advances and strides we've made, we've made in terms of not just online delivery of academic content, but also just the ability to connect our community and take advantage of this are, are things that are really exciting. And I'd like to kind of share a few things that we've, we've, we've done. And, and I'll, I'll say now, you know, as evidence, and I'll thank ahead of time, we have several of our students here joining us and then several of the program team also joining us. So once I'm done giving sort of my, my little bit on the program, um, we have plenty of here, people here that you can interact with. And I think that's one of the, the beauties of sort of this Zoom environment. So with that, um, hopefully we've got some glitches figured out it looks like in the chat window more people are, are, are getting that going so i'd like to just really kick off um a little bit around what makes the program special right um and you know, people in our program and students and people that have heard me talk before will probably hear me talk about this often but i just think it's it's absolutely critical right so our program is really built on, on three core pillars and it's, it's the academic insight, practical application, and, and the peer and community engagement. And it's one where we, we live at the intersection of all three of those. And it's one of these things where what I kind of, what to me really makes it special is this is perfectly placed for Cambridge, right? So naturally, when you think of, you know, academic integrity and academic rigor, obviously Cambridge comes to mind with that. But when you think of practical application in the world of entrepreneurship, Cambridge also comes to the fore there, right? Cambridge is you know, one of the most exciting places to be when it comes to an entrepreneurial ecosystem. And this also lends itself to kind of the peer and community engagement. There are, it's not to say there aren't other exciting sort of entrepreneurial ecosystems out there, but part of what makes Cambridge so special is just the collaborative nature that's built into it. Right, so it's it's a smaller community. That's not to say it's a you know it's a simple one to figure out, but you know it's smaller than Silicon Valley. But the the output and the engagement is is massive. So I think it's one where yes, other places could talk about academic insight and practical application and peer. We are you know what I think makes Cambridge and this program so special is the intersection of all three, right? And with that, I usually flip it around. It's one where, you know, yes, I'm, I, I sort of, I'm obviously very proud of our program and I feel very positive about it. But at the same time, we never try and um, take really the hard sell approach, right? So the key thing that we view in our program is it's, it's a matching game, right? So anytime we interview prospective students, anytime we discuss it, we're really trying to make sure that this is the right program for you. Right? So it's one of those, 
And, and what would make it the right program for you? Well, we want people that recognize the value in, in all three of these pillars, right? So we, we don't really, if you just want to come here just to get, you know, an academic degree and you want to sort of postpone the point at which you actually work on things and it's just kind of, that's all I want. Well, we're not really right for you because there's a large portion of the program that is based on practice, right? And community engagement. Likewise, if you only want to join the program because you want to network, we're not really the right program for you because I, you know, I can't underscore if you only join it because you want the network, there's, a, there's you know, a, a lot of academics and it's an academic program at the end of the day, right? And if you only care about practice, well, we're probably not the right program. So it's, it's one where we really want people that want to live in that intersection, right? With that, I'll, I'll just elaborate a, a little bit more, right? So I think it's, you know, this is mainly the point that I talked about, that it's not just academics, but the key point of why these three are so important and why we, we rely on them so much is at the end of the day, if you embrace this mindset, if you embrace and come along the journey and say, yes, I, I you know, I, I value the complementarities that exist between the academic bits, the practical bits, and the community bits. At the end of the day, this will provide better clarity of thought, right? It'll, which ultimately will then allow you to make better decisions. And that's, that's really where we're, we're marching towards. Ah, fantastic. So we've got a raised hand. So please unmute and ask a question. Did I, I can't hear you if you had raised a hand. You, so if you, if you're, if you're having trouble, trouble with the, the mic, please, you can also type it into the chat window. I think um, maybe somebody was testing out the blue hand. <laughs> ah, so I might've, might've pushed the wrong button, right? So these are the, 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 the glitches and the little learning curves of, of Zoom that, that we get, right? So False alarm on the question. I was getting, I thought someone wanted to, to, to chime in there. Um, if so, please do. So uh, again, all of this, you know, why, why do we kind of, what are the complementarities geared at? Really, ultimately, to, to make you a more effective decision maker, make you a more effective entrepreneur. But this, to, to us, you know, we think when we have the academic rigor, that in and of itself isn't enough, right? With our program, you can actually, you're working on your own venture, you're hearing from practitioners, and the real learning comes from trying to square the academic frameworks and the academic bits with what's actually happening and how are people applying this? How can I, how can I do this and how can I understand this? And can I fit them together or do we need a new way of thinking, right? That enables you to then ask better questions of, of both the faculty and of, of your peers, right? So a lot of this comes through, through your peers and, and the, the student body, right? The student, the student body is, is really helps make things special. Any, just, I think I've probably covered that, but I wanna make sure I pause for a second if there are any questions or if there were any hands on that or any comments there. If not, I will just roll along. Cause we'll have, we'll have plenty of, plenty of time to, to chat at the end. So beyond just the academic bit, it's worthwhile, and this is, I think, um, in a sort of odd way, like part time doesn't really doesn't really do full justice to what it is, right? Because by no means does part time mean it's not a full degree because you're, you're doing a, a tremendous amount of work. So it's, it's all the work that's involved in, in a, a standard degree, but part-time means you're, you're not in Cambridge most of the time. And part doesn't really even give that justice, right? Cause it's, you're in Cambridge for three weeks out of the first year and then one week out of the second year. So over two years, your feet are on the ground for, for four full weeks, right? And it's one where right now, because you know, all learning everywhere is completely online, um, you know, it's, I can share last week for our, our first year cohort, 
last week was su supposed to be their second residential, right? So it was supposed to be the second week where they were all coming back together. Um, they had seen each other in September and it was a really exciting time and we were all, you know, extremely looking forward to, to last week. Um, unfortunately, given the, given the current situation, naturally you can imagine we weren't able to, to have an in-person residential. What was, what was really impressive, um, and, and I think we, we all walked away in an, odd, in an odd way, we left last week with a similar level of excitement as to we left September. Not, obviously we were all sad that we didn't get to see each other and, and you know, in 3D and hang out and actually talk and shake hands and, and, and all that. But what, was, what it pushed us to do was it pushed us to actually get closer and figure out ways to connect in the same way we would in person, virtually. So something I, I'd argue we, we probably wouldn't have had that learning. I don't know, or I should say, I don't know when we would have had that learning had we not been forced to now, right? But both the combination of the students being who they were and willing to embrace this and, and you know, the program team in the school pushing and rallying to support this, we've now really figured out, okay, we can do a lot more during the part when we're, when we're separate. So I think I'll, I'll touch a little bit more on that later, but I think right now it's, it's, um, it's an exciting time for programs like ours that do the majority of the delivery online and in a distance format, right? So online delivery is, you know, academic is delivered mostly online. We do under, under normal circumstances, we do have 25, ah, Claude, that's a hand up, right? Yeah. <laughs> you need to unmute is the only thing. Yep, perfect. Okay, can you hear me now? I can. Yeah, um, I was just wondering if uh, the students will get the, um, the, the residential week, uh, like put back into their timetable? Um, or is that, is, is that week sort of gone now and it's not gonna happen? Yeah, it's as you know, you know, there's the, the few students who are on with us today who would would love it if we could get that put back in. Um, it's not something that, you know, if you think of it every single week in the whole entire year is completely allocated, right? Across the, the 16 programs that the school has and every single program has had the weeks missed. So there aren't just extra weeks to put back in, right? Um, that's, so that, yeah, it's one where we can't get a, a, we can't get a new weekend what we're trying to do is is always take the benefits you know somewhat make lemonade out of lemons right um and instead we're trying to say how can we add how can we find ways now from the learning we had to get you know more of the practitioner stuff more of the stuff happening in between that wouldn't have happened before but okay. there's there it's in, it's just not possible for us to find another week of capacity for the school across all programs, right? It would be it would be adding weeks to the year. <laughs> if you know a way to do that, please let me know. <laughs> if we if we could if we could put fifty uh, the fifty third week in the year, we could definitely put it back, and we don't we'd love to have that week. So when you figure that one out, let me know, and we'll we'll get it in there. But without that, where it's a it's a very very unfortunate setting for all of us. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um. So yeah, so the, the, the majority of the, on, the academic content is online. The majority of the practitioner content, right? So this is the part that always, in the residentials, the residentials are designed so all of, the, all of our practitioner workshops happen in the residentials. But last week, as we saw, we did a bunch of those online and we can do a lot more of, of that. So we're right now in a transitioning phase of saying, okay, wait a second, on this, there are some practitioners who can't make it to Cambridge, but would like to still contribute. Are there ways for us to get them engaged now in, in using the online platform? So that's somewhat, that's a, an exciting, exciting sort of exploration step for the program right now. Um, the program is, you know, as I'll give you some stats on is massively global program, right? So our, our, our students come from, from all around the globe and we get the collaborative, bits among among this network but then we everyone has sort of this unique tie to to cambridge judge right so 
it's really nice that we get the breadth of all the different perspectives coming from everywhere, but all coming back to Cambridge and kind of having this connection to the Cambridge ecosystem, right? Which, as I mentioned, sort of, it, it just, when you're, when you're here and you're in Cambridge, you, you do get this, this sense of sort of the collaborative um, spirit that, that exists. And one of the big parts of the, you know, the format that we have is it, it's allowing true experiential learning, right? So you're, you're, you're engaging in academic content, you're talking to people, and then you're trying to apply it real time to what, whatever your venture is that you're, you're working on, right? So it's one where, this is where I have sort of the skin in the game, right? So it's, it's not, it's working on something that, that you care about, that it's, it's your venture, not necessarily just um, sort of an academic exercise in experiential learning. Because experiential learning, you know, I, I do experiential learning a lot of the time, which is not someone's own venture. It's just a common experience that the classroom has. On that, then the, the, the last bit here is one um, that I kind of lead into the whole notion of really the diversity within the program, right? And it's one where, you know, we have a, a, a ton of different experience across the cohort, ton of different industries, um, a ton of different objectives in terms of what's the output that they want to have at the end of two years, at the end of five years, or in, in some, um, some horizon. So on that, it's, it's a massively diverse crowd. But the one thing that I, I really try and emphasize is the, the mindset is the one bit where we try not to have so much variance. And the mindset is around, you know, everybody cares about one another, right? We, we care about the community. It's not a set of entrepreneurs that just want to be successful at any cost and don't care how they get it done. We, we want people in our program that do care about how things are done and want to do things the right way and that care about one another and that want to be collaborative, right? So the, this mindset is something that we, we do our best in the, in the selection process to try and find people that, that fit, right? So we, we don't just want any entrepreneur that, that wants to be successful. That's, that's by no means our, you know, our threshold or our gauge of, of who is right for our program, right? And I think, you know, as sort of evidence on the diversity side, you know, the, the charts I have here are, show, you know, if you look at on the, on the left-hand side, this is sort of the citizenship of our current cohort. Um, which basically with the um, UK is the largest. After that, it's just the pie gets sliced extremely finely, right? Um, so massive, massive amount of diversity there. Um, I think before even going through all the diversity, the, the one aspect that, you know, my, my plea to anyone out there where we, have, where we do not have enough, and it's a struggle that's much wider than our program, is there's just not enough gender diversity, right? So we, it's, this is something that, you know, we're, we're trying to, to do whatever we can within the program. And I think we've made actually huge strides in terms of adding many more women faculty to the program, a lot more women contributors trying to make the program reflect that, right? So naturally, women aren't going to be as attracted to a program if there's not many women in it. But these are things that, you know, we, we're not there. It's at, right now, we're at 25%. And we would love, this is the one area of the diversity that we would love to, to push higher. On age, it's sort of, for those people that are at all statisticians, right, it's sort of a log normal distribution on here, right? So it's got a long tail out in terms of, in, in terms of age. It's, the point there is that average of 31 doesn't tell the full story. Looking at the distribution, you can see that we sort of have a, a lump of people that are, are, are younger, more out of uni, and then we have a, you know, a nice long tail um, of experience, right? Uh, Jeremy, just yeah. a second. Yes. We have a question from Rio. Yep. Please. Hey, uh, you're muted, Rio. Uh, so there we go. Okay, yes, hi. Um, my name is Rayhan. I'm a PhD student from uh, Reading University, Henley Business School. I used to uh, attend this uh, seminar even here in London back in the, uh, two years ago, and I've met you personally as well. I'm still uh, interested to deliver the project to Saudi Arabia, and I think you don't have that student from Saudi because I think, and I'm willing to collaborate to 
collaborate with you to help this program to be delivered to Middle East. Because I, especially now with what's happening, I think uh, we should deliver, we should, we should make it bigger. I, as, as, as far as I see my question, do we have, do you have Saudi students before at this program or from Gulf? Um, we, we do have in the Gulf, so we actually have students who are based in the UAE. Um, Emirates, you mean? In the Emirates, yeah. Um, so non Emirati. We do have a, a Saudi student as well in year two. In year, in year two, two yes. Yeah. Yeah, so this is year one. In the year two, we, we have, and I, I don't know whether Nikki could speak it going further past. It's one of, right, this is, this is a snapshot of it. We can, um, Naturally, if we put this, and it's, I think it's more fair to give you a snapshot of a single year. It would be misleading if I gave it's, you a snapshot of, of several years, right? But it will be, yes. It will be more specific for, especially for other nationalities to see, because I'm searching about countries. I'm searching about 195 countries and labor force, and women in labor force. So yeah. to me, I like to see the, the broad of country and from Gulf, so I can help in that matter. That's why yeah. I attended today, to be honest with you guys. And yeah. thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you. No, it's, it's one where, um, you know, the specific, because if you think about when it, we're 1%, most of these are, you know, it's single and two, you know, one to two students, right? So uh, a single student from, you know, Azerbaijan, we might have one this year, next year we might have someone from, from Saudi and, you know, it's going to vary year over year. Mm -hmm. It's just single students there. The, the, um, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. But the, the course, it's, has to, it's two year, right? The course is a two year as course. As far as yes, I remember, no. and it's 30,000, something like that. As far yeah, as and the, the exact specific figures are, are on, on the website of, of the cost okay, that thank way. Thank you so much. I'll, I will lay out, you know, in terms of the, the structure over the two years. Um, and then there was a, another question in terms of the, the number of students that will be admitted. We don't have a, an explicit cap, right? So we, that said, It'll be, it will be roughly 70 students is, is what we, we expect. But it's one where the, the key on this is far and above everything, we go by quality, right? So it's, we want the right students in here and, and it's how many of the right students turn up. So we, it's not that we're, we're marching towards a quota of we have to fill 70 students or we have to fill 60 students. We're searching for the right students. That's above all else that's our, our key criteria is do do the students do the students fit with the objectives of the program and and that's that's where we start so it's um you know there's a couple questions that are even nested in the question of how many students will be admitted it's one of those some people will say well what's the admissions rate and this is one where you know when we give those numbers they're somewhat misleading too because we we try to have discussions with people early on and, and only guide people that really fit what we view as the right sort of person. And if they talk to us and we'll have a discussion that says, you know what, this is our program and, and we try to be very upfront with it. And if you, don't, if you don't match with our program, then we don't encourage you to apply, right? So it's, it's not, you know, we're not trying to pad the, the acceptance rate numbers by giving you this super low acceptance rate by getting everyone to apply. That's just, it's just not really who we are as a, as a program. Um, so the, 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 guiding, the guiding feature here is if you fit our program, you, you, know, you meet the academic qualifications, you, you're a good match for the program, and we, you, know, you want this and we want you, that's, that's where the magic happens. Right? So that's what we try to, what we try to do there. Um, Jeremy, we have yeah. another question. Yes. Oh, hi. Hi, Jeremy. This is Akshay. Uh, I'm an Indian software engineer based in Finland. And my question is regarding the program, that, uh, how, how does the program work with the Cambridge cluster? Uh, if you have some ideas and if you're working on some company, so how, how has it been like in the past, like the first two batches? Whether, because I was very keen to know, and I found out there is one company which is into spatial OS and it's a spin-off of Cambridge University. So something if you can tell around those lines, that how does the, the applicants work with, within the Cambridge clusters? Yeah, so um, that's a fantastic question, right? So it's one of these things, um, and you can probably even speak afterwards to Pradeep, who's actually was based in London and has since 
move to and sorry for deep for calling you out, but has moved to Cambridge and and has really ingrained himself over over the past several years of, of becoming part of the, the Cambridge ecosystem, right? Um, the Cambridge ecosystem is one, you know, people will hear me talk a lot about this. It's not the easiest to just, you know, put your feet on the ground and call one person up and say, hey, I can figure it out, right? I can just call this person and say, connect me with who I need to be connected with. But it is an ecosystem that is massively collaborative, right? So it's decentralized. This is where the mentors in our program, the peers in our program, and the overall judge business school, right? So the entrepreneurship center can help. So if you have, if there is an initiative going on, people can point you in the right direction of, hey, you ought to go talk to this person or you ought to attend this event. And then it comes down to, and this is you know, one of the points that I always try and make. If you have the initiative that's willing to go on and say, you know what, Akshay, you need to go, you should go over here and speak to these people, or there's an EPOC event, or there's a postdoc thing happening. Go, why don't you go over there, put yourself out there. The people that do that make the connections, right? So it's, it's one of those, there's the opportunities and the amount of people that exist here are phenomenal. It's, but that doesn't mean that it's by just coming here, the connections are going to happen. It takes work. Right? So it's one of those things where I, I never want to sugarcoat it and say, like, joining the program and coming to Cambridge, ah, you're guaranteed to, to, to connect with someone. No, no, it still takes work. But if you want a place where they're, you know, bright people are happy or really want to work with other bright people, this is, this is that place, right? And there's a lot of stuff happening, right? Um, you know, and there's even connections. Our program has several student ventures that are sponsoring another program within the entrepreneurship center. So we have a program called enterprise tech, right? And enterprise tech is a program that is geared towards taking many of the scientists. So postdocs, undergrads, grad students, PhD students who really don't have any business background, but have this little inkling of wanting to get involved a little bit in entrepreneurship. And so the enterprise tech program is one where you have, they, they deem them inventors, but in, many, in our case, it's some of the entrepreneurs in our program who sponsor, you know, who sponsor a team. Sponsor doesn't mean they're not paying. They have a project that they offer to a team. And this is a way that actually connects scientists interested in ventures with entrepreneurs who are working on it. And in some cases, they end up joining the venture, right? There's also other, you know, there are venture creation weekends. There's different pitching events happening at different colleges with different societies. There's a lot of things going on is the, you know, the long winded answer. It just takes the initiative. So as long as you have the initiative, you can make it happen. But that would be, does that address? Fantastic. Um, um, we have yeah. another question, uh, yeah. Jeremy from uh, Mason. Is the yep. program heavily based on review of case studies similar to MBA programs? <laughs> so you, you almost, um, <laughs> you almost gave me the, the segue to my next slide, right? So the next slide is kind of, how are we different from, from part-time programs such as, such as an executive MBA, right? Um, and and I'll, I'll start with entrepreneurship as a, as a discipline when it comes to the academic side. Um, there's many similarities, obviously, to innovation in business and large corporations. But what's massively different is the context, right? So the context of an entrepreneur is very different than the context of a large organization in terms of, and for both the good and the bad. So the agility, right? The agility, the size, the number of resources, and the context is very different. So in our program, what we're trying to do is, yes, there will be similar subjects, but they're all taught through the lens of an entrepreneur, right? So they're, they're always trying to frame it around okay, given we're in the context of an entrepreneur, how should we think about strategy, right? Um, and so this is sort of, you know, without me providing any explanation, you're wondering why I have arrows on a, on a, on a, a plot here, right? And it's one where, you know, I would argue even the MBA program and the executive MBA program here at Judge are different than other MBA programs, right? So because Cambridge is such an entrepreneurial place, 
both our MBA and our executive MBA have core subjects that are innovation based and entrepreneurship courses, right? But the difference is within an MBA course, generally there will be entrepreneurs as well, right? But the entrepreneurs within an MBA course are usually more towards the fringe, right? So there's much, and it's the tales of the distribution. They're more sort of the outliers in, a, in an MBA program the general discussion that happens in an MBA program is, is usually around more general management, large organizations, these sort of things. Where, and there might be some fringe discussions that usually get more crowded out around the entrepreneurship side. Right? And the teaching by nature is a more of a general management teaching. Not, it's not teaching through the lens of entrepreneurship. Right? That all gets flipped on its head in our program. Right? So naturally there are things you know there are overlaps in terms of subject matter but the discussion that happens because the cohort is a cohort of people who are all you know have the mindset around entrepreneurship the discussion is much more around okay given given i'm a nascent venture how do i make this work right how should i view this within this context and that changes things massively right so it's it's just a completely different context right so I think it's one, are there case studies? Um, there are case studies that, there are case studies that overlap. Um, is that the majority? By far no. Even if it is a case study that you might have seen in, a, in an MBA class, I would argue the discussion that ensues and how it is taught and the lens through which you look at it is completely different just because of the specialized nature of the program. Right? So, and I think that's, those are ones where we have to be very upfront because if you, if you want the general management large organization, you're, you're not going to get that. You are going to get a much more focused discussion. All the students are going to want to talk about how does this fit within an entrepreneurial context, right? So this is one where if someone is more geared towards just I want large organization application, then we're not the right program for you, right? Um, so on the nationality distribution, uh, yes, so the stats for how many students are based. So that was, the citizenship was the one that I showed you. If I change that, that pie chart to one of where are people based, it becomes roughly 50% UK based, right? So it's, it's, much, it's much larger, obviously, UK based, and a large number of the people there have citizenship outside of the UK, but are based here in the UK. So it's, it's I think, I think it's right, you know, give or take a few percentage points, right around 50% based here. So that, yeah, and that's, that's an important um, clarification. Yeah, and it's one of those, so I, I'll say one more point on the case studies. So it's one of the objectives of both, you know, an objective we have in a program and an objective we have as a, as a school and an entrepreneurship center. We are, we're working right now with some of, our student ventures and some of the entrepreneurship center ventures to write more entrepreneurship cases. Because if you look overall just at the number of high quality cases out there for teaching, there's just not that many entrepreneurship cases to, to give students. And that's a lot of it ends up that way. So we're looking to, to change that and we're looking to change that programmatically that we can actually offer this. So, um, and I know I, so these are fantastic questions. I'm probably going to get urged along by Kirsten and Lara to, to keep my to keep things going to make sure you have have stuff right. So I, I'm 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 right right with you. Um, so let me on on that. Let me skip to kind of the the how the program is structured, right? And you know the the main slide that I skipped was just one that we had really talked about in terms of we want to make sure that people you know, have, have initiative, right? So people, people will come to us and kind of ask us, will we make them successful? And, and we, we really try and stick to the tagline of that, you know, we're about people, not ventures, that we, we will try to do everything we can to support you as a person, but you have to have the initiative to make things successful, right? You are the one that will make, make your venture successful. So um, it's worthwhile just going through, you know, because there was a question in terms of the, the, the program, um also thank thank you pradeep see this is pradeep is a, so testament to our students here right so you can you can pull up all these stats we've got this so i, I 
you know, to me, these are the things that I can, I can sit here and spout about our students all the time, but the credibility comes in terms of, first off, seeing them here and being collaborative and, and willing to contribute, and then always pitching in and, 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 and helping, thing, helping things out. Right? So um, let me just try and close in terms of the structure, and I would have to put the caveat of the, the structure under normal times, right? Um, and by no means is this in scale to, to time, right? So we start off in September with the first residential week. The, the September residential week is, is one that is, is special in terms of this is when everyone's first coming together. There's massive amount of induction activities and everyone's just trying to sort of make their way through Cambridge and the program. So this is the one residential week that we, you know, we don't have a ton of um, practitioner sessions in because of there's so much in terms of induction activities and, and really familiarity, getting everyone acquainted with one another and really trying to sort of build cohesiveness among, among the community. Then we go in the, in the fall term or the Michaelmas term of, of Cambridge, which runs September to December, is when we have the first set of core classes. And then we have, so in, in that we do core courses September to December, we do the next set of core courses from January until March. And then we have our March residential week under normal circumstances. We would have had our March residential week last, last week, right? And the March is where we, we wrap up the core courses. We start kicking off our elective courses. And this is where we start introducing all of the, the practitioner workshops, right? In all residentials, September, March, June, December, all of them, we have opportunities to, to meet with our mentors. And we also always tailor in um, extra little workshops. So non-assessed courses, but things such as storytelling. Um, how, do you, how do you communicate better through writing? How do you try and pitch your idea? Um, we, would, we would generally, again, under normal circumstances, we would have had a, a, there would have been a pitch event run by the Entrepreneurship Center that we would participate in down in London, which would have been coming up, which would have been this week. We would have had in the March residential, in the residentials, we, we usually have what's what we consider sort of community pitch events. And these are ones which they're in the program and it's um, within a, a sort of very collaborative environment where it's a safer chance to tune and hone your pitching skills and get, get feedback. So we then we finish up the, we have one more residential after the first set of electives that kicks off the second set of electives and then that wraps up year one. So year one is, is all the academic coursework, right? So both core courses, electives are complete. And then year two is where we, the, the main emphasis of year two is, is a major project, which will hopefully allow every, all of the learning to sort of synthesize. And we kick this off with a research methods course. and then that leads into the December residential. And then from December until when the major project is due in July, over this period of time, in addition to your mentor, you're given an academic supervisor. And this is, now it's more unstructured in the sense of you don't have a, you know, classes and units being released all the time. Now you're trying to find a topic that aligns with whatever venture or whatever you're working on for you to really dig into and, and, and write, write a thesis on, do the major project. Right. Um, I think the, the bottom bit I, I had talked about a lot, but this is one of, um, I, I think we had these gray boxes of the residentials is where we always had kind of waited for that time to really develop community. And one of the things we're really learning a lot about now is through the crisis that we have going on, we're figuring out how to make a lot of that happen in between those residentials. And, and personally, you know, I'm really excited about our ability to, to really capitalize it and go off of that. So I, I'm sorry for sort of quickly going through the last bit and talking a lot here, but I wanna make sure that, that we have time for more questions and we have time for, for you to interact also with our students that are here. And, and if, there's, if there are further admission specific questions, Nikki's here as well to help on, on that side. Um, are there other questions? Regarding your questions uh, yeah. on the chat, uh, Eric. Yeah, so on G on on GMAT and um, 
these are so if if you don't meet the academic qualifications and then um on there we but we've deemed that you should you fit the course and all that then you'd have to pass the gmat qualification right and you have to pass the gmat qualification to be able to be admitted at that side um i i think and it's one Nikki will probably quote i think the i think the gmat is 640 650 or something like that and we'd have to those are ones where you could um definitely offline email us and get the details of of the admissions requirements there um and the core course and elective there i can go through there all all that stuff is listed on the elective the core courses um are ones you know business model right now so we we start off with and there this is one where for they're slightly changing but they're represented on the, on the website accurately for next year right so it's one it's organizations and um this is off the top of my head and then it's going to be negotiation and um negotiation skills we're going to have systems thinking we have business models and opportunities and business models we have how many am i at am i getting here we have marketing we have help me are you looking you can look at the pull up the easiest on there is what i have systems marketing opportunities business models organizations negotiation strategy strategy and opportunities business model that's that's to that's it those are the core courses then in the elective in the elective courses i'll start with my own on that right we have growth and scaling we've got a, a another marketing elective which i is um and then we have uh managing external threats data science we have managing financial resources we have pitching and investor networks we have one of my you're testing me on on all of these right so there you go thank you someone so yeah. there's the, the list in the chat window perfect and others there was a question actually on the top from uh, eric uh, i'm now based in hong kong yeah. i would like to ask a question related to residential work activities apart from attending the courses can students organize company visits activities after class to enrich the community um so i I'd probably argue that and Pradeep and Terry can answer this, and uh, I think I saw Cornelius pop in there. The the residential weeks tend to be fairly packed, um, so there's not there's probably not much time for company visits, and especially on that we in the residentials we bring a lot of entrepreneurs to you, so they're coming to judge, and these these tend to be more more effective if if somehow you find time on top of this um you could this isn't something where you know we're not gonna i think we would get a revolt from the students if we tried to pack more on top of what we're already doing there generally the cohort tends to appreciate any time that we have left open to be time to just uh get to know one another and discuss what they're working on and, and see where where things are so that that's generally what goes on there um and i think yeah so um the business law we have on that we have there's ip right so we have an I, ip one in terms of other courses outside of from other departments within the university this this is one you know the courses are limited to the courses that that we have within the program and this is um that's just how this works out. We say, well, the course provide. This is one. Um, I I usually return to um, when we talk about you know us providing. I think the the course supports you. It's what you want to do for yourself, right? So it's the exposure bit and how you go about the the ex and some of that would say what you know when you say exposure exposure to lots of different practitioners exposure to lots of different perspectives exposure to lots of different peers 
yeah, I mean, it, it, it does that. But again, it's, it, it all depends on what you want to, what you want to get and not, and one of the things, you know, our current students can attest that I have, you know, I kind of, what I try to preach, we try and find students that aren't only saying, what can I get from the program, right? So we, we want, we really would like people to say, yes, we all, what can we all get from the program, right? So what can we, can, how can we contribute to make everything, everything better, right? So um, the term I usually, we have to look at the, the program and each other as, as assets, not just resources we consume on that. And so we really are trying to find what, not just what will the program do for me, but how can we work together and, and be complementary? That's what we're trying to get at. Um, and I also want to, so there's, you know, this is one that I can, if there aren't questions for me, but also, you know, for, for our students. And I think. Yeah, Jeremy, I was wondering if this would be a good time maybe to open the floor up and, yeah. and um, introduce our students that we've got here today. Um, we've got um, Thierry, Pradeep, um, Nicola and Cornelius here. Um, also, I think um, maybe I can just um, start with a, with a very short story. Um, today, if it hadn't been for the coronavirus outbreak, we would be traveling to London. Um, today is actually our day um, for our students to pitch to investors. It was planned um, to happen at Canary Wharf. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, um, this is not happening now. Um, but last year, at the same time, um, we had our pitch event um, at the same place in Canary Wharf at le level 39. And in the audience sat Pradeep, um, listening to our students pitching. And at the end of the evening, um, Pradeep was invited by the students to go along for dinner. They were exchanging email addresses, inviting him into the WhatsApp group, whatever our students do in, in their um, free time. And of course, now Pradeep um, is one of our students. So, and, and here today to speak to you. If you've got any questions, um, I would highly recommend that you make use of your time and, and speak to Jerry Pradi, Nicola and Cornelius and ask them about their experience of our program. Thanks, Kirsten. Yeah, that's how I got to know the team and here I am. Happy to ask any questions if there's anything. If anybody's got any questions for our students, please feel free. And these are one if, if I can here actually I think has right please up oh, unmute actually yeah I'll unmute you there you yeah. go oh sorry oh <laughs> that's okay yeah um I'm interested in knowing like uh, how the experience has been during the first year uh like uh, and how because I see the program how it is structured and often uh, while building ideas or something and I've been into startups for quite a long period of time in case if I don't want to study the complete two years and if my venture takes off. And so I, I want to, sh first question is regarding whether do you still get the alumni status if you just do the postgraduate diploma uh, from the school? And uh, can you have some break period? Like you can stretch the studies say, from two years to a period of three years. Yeah, on that. So I can address the, the diploma part, but then I think, I think the students are best to address how they found the the first year yeah. there is you must have a very keen eye for paying attention to the, done your research on the website right so that there there is um as you noted on there an exit option after the first year where you would get a postgraduate diploma in entrepreneurial studies right so there is what we call the optionality right so if it turns out that after the first year you realize that things have taken off or whatever and you're going to exit then you would get the postgraduate diploma in entrepreneurial studies. That would, you are matriculated at that time, so you still do get alumni status. There. So once, once you're entered in as a student of Cambridge, you've matriculated, and then you just get the postgraduate diploma, not the master's degree. Uh, that's that part of it. I'll let the students address the other, the other bit, which I think was how was the first year, right? Is, I, or how do, how do things work while working on ventures, or how do you, balance all these out right so i think i think the um it really comes down to to planning to some degree 
I mean, I would urge everyone not to underestimate the amount of academic work there is to do. Because as Jeremy said, it's not because it's part-time that it's a part program. It is definitely a full-on program. So I would really urge people to, to take that into account. But at the end of the day, you, you know, it comes down to, to planning and, and assessing you know, when, you can, when you can make the time. But it definitely requires uh, a very concrete level of commitment. But it's fun. I mean, <laughs> I'm not, thanks, I'm Jerry. Not, just you know, <laughs> no, I, I, I generally I didn't mean to like bring down the hammer. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, no, no, it's it's super. It's 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 super interactive. Um, it's a small, relatively small cohort, and the the feel of the judge in general, even though it's massive amounts of resources, it feels like a small and connected and relatively intimate community. So from that perspective. Um, Yes, it's a lot of work, but at the same time, um, there's a lot of support. And um, and I was I was saying this to someone in the program last week during our residential. Uh, the thing that will surprise you is that people don't say no. People are there to help, and you will find that across the school. Yes, I would also like to add something on that point from Akshay. As I as I had the same questions before applying um, to the program as well. So Nicola and me, we are in the same um, startup, and we thought, should we actually study something aside to that, or should we just go for the for the starting uh, the company? And um, as as any other course would have been a waste of time, this does not feel uh, like a waste of time because you're doing exactly the same things that you would do anyways just more with a more more certainty in, in many aspects so um we, we wanted to incorporate more um research-based um assumptions sometimes for the other startup we were working uh, for in but this was not possible and now now with the masters we are feeling way more certain and uh yeah, to, to follow the masters, but also following the, the um, startup. And yeah, it's, it's just going hand in hand. Yeah, and I, I would say you'd be certainly doing the same things that you were doing before, but with more resources and more connections and more have on your side. If I, if I can go back to one thing Jeremy said a moment ago, it's, it's really about clarity of thought and all the resources that are being put at your disposal and the, the discussions you will have and the classes you will have, um, even if you've been, you know, in practice or have had a career and a, a business career, um, there's a certain level of, of applied rigor that does get, help you achieve better clarity of thought. Sorry, let me just say, um, sorry, I think um, Jeremy um, actually said that he would have another commitment um, now. Um, Jeremy, do you want to maybe say your goodbyes and then we will just carry on without you, is that okay? Yeah, um, thank you. Yes, yeah, so it's one of, I, you know, again, it's one of these things in the program that right now the students that are here are phenomenal to answer questions and our team that's here. Um, you know, thank you for paying attention and bearing with me as I, I go through this. If more things uh, come up that aren't answered here, the program team and everyone is, this comes back to what I think Jerry just said, you know, we're not going to hear no. We're, we're, we're here to try and make sure we all make the right decision. Right? So that's the goal on this is we, we want the right people for the right reasons. Right? Um, and it's one, you know, we don't want to try and sugarcoat anything. It is an academic program. It is part, the, the part I, on Cherry's thing, it's like, it's full. I, I like to think of it almost as full-time programs can be, you know, more intense over a, you know, one year and you're, cause you're only in that place. This is more of, you know, the pain is almost dull. It's dull, but long period of time. Right. So it's not as, as much of an instant shock. Right. But, but it's, it's a, it's a constant amount of work for the whole year long. Right. And it's, it's not something that we want to say, ah, don't worry about that at all. But it's one where if you want to pursue it and you want the clarity of thought, actually doing that work, not a bad thing because you see the benefits of like, huh, 
I'm thinking about that in a little bit different way and it's valuable. So to me, I, I it, all, all of this comes back to that sort of first picture that I put up. If you really see the value of academic thought practitioners and all of your peers and, and navigating that, then, then you'll see the value in the program. Um, with that, I'll just thank you for your attention and we look forward to chatting with you in the future.